Today we are going to be discussing different types of lifts that can be used as a part of your robot. In this lesson we'll be going over different types of lifts that can commonly be seen in VEX. We'll go over some of the pros and cons of each lift so that you can have a better idea of each type for future reference. A two bar, also known as a simple arm lift, is a type of lift where a bar rotates in an arc. It is the simplest lift in VEX and can be used successfully in very specific circumstances. The end of the bar does not keep a parallel orientation, and the lift does not lift linearly. This means that whatever is attached to the end of this lift will not stay parallel to the ground. A four bar is one of the simple lifts that uses two parallel bars mounted on two more parallel bars that go upwards linearly and is often, is often used with VEX. A two, the two bars that go up are, vertically, are vertical and always will stay perpendicular to the ground when the lift goes up. It can utilize ratios, which gives it different amounts of torque to lift game elements up with the four bar. So, these two arms right here are the two arms that will change orientation, and this bar right here will be your gearbox. This right here is going to be your intake mount. Uh, the distances between these two top holes and these two bottom holes needs to be the same, in the same sense that these two bar lengths need to be the same. If they are not, you are not going to have a um, this intake bar right here will not maintain the same orientation and at the same time you will not uh, get a lift that works the way that you wanted it to. A six, uh, six bar serves a similar function to the four bar and adds more height. Due to its starting position being offset um, to be higher compared to that of the four bar, its ending position is going to be a little higher as well. It helps take advantage of the space given. And it's the same concept. You have your gearbox bar here, and you'll have a one longer bar that goes all the way down to the end, and it'll be attached to the bottom of your intake mount. However, for the other three bars, it's going to be attached down here, and it'll be around half the distance of this, but you can change these modifications. It could be this short if you wanted it to. And then you're going to put your uh, mounting bar up. Now, if you look right here, this is just a simple four bar mechanism. So this space and this space needs to be the same. Likewise, the space between this joint and this joint for this bar needs to be the same for this bar. And then the same thing goes for this, the spacing here, 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 and here. And then you'll have this bar maintaining orientation. And then for the eight bar, it's almost the exact same uh, purpose as the six bar. It's just giving you a little bit more height. Um, and then it's also gonna be a little bit less compact as you fold it down because it has a much higher starting position. Um, if you look at this, it kind of just looks like a ton of four bars stacked on, on top of each other, and you could keep going and do as many as you wanted to. I know I have done that, uh, my fair share of that in the past, and uh, it's this, it is the same concept, but the only problem with some of these lifts as you keep going is they're more and more, uh, they lose their linear trait, um, which they actually didn't have in the first place. But if I were to follow this intake bar down, it wouldn't go straight down to the ground, it would go and curve. And that's one of the problems that people have is because when you go out like this, your weight goes forward and that could cause your robot to tip. For a chain bar, it utilizes two sprockets and a chain. One of them is mounted onto the base of the lift and does not move. And the other sprocket is placed on the uh, another arm where the chain is um, and then placed to connect the two sprockets. The advantage of the chain bar is that it, the chain allows the lift to have a whole range of where it can reach. So this chain bar can go all the way around, whereas a four bar had to stop right here. Um, so you get 360 degrees of, almost 360 degrees of motion. Um, however, if the chain becomes undone or snaps, the lift will be unstable and is not gonna function properly. So uh, this gear ratio right here is the one that is meant to move the bar. And then there's a sprocket right here that is not mount to, mounted to the bar, it's actually mounted to the C channel, so it will not rotate at all. Um, but relative to this side, this one's going to have to rotate a little bit. And so the chain just maintains the orientation of this C-channel, which will be mounted to the gear. For the double reverse four bar, it utilizes two opposite parallel four bars that are aligned such as the top of the lift always runs perpendicular to the ground. So this, what that means is this bar right here is always going to maintain its same orientation and then you just have two four bars offset and you're going to put a gear at the top of one of them and a gear at the bottom of the other one 
Typically, teams use 60 tooth gears or 84 tooth gears, just because the spacing is a lot easier to work with. Um, and then you can add your own uh, 12 tooth gear, which will allow you to power it. And this is how you get a double reverse four bar. And if you want it to have to be linear, you're going to need both of these four bar links to be the same. So again, same rules with the four bar as if you normally would. So you have the same spacing here and here and the same spacing here and here. Um, the spacing on the gear box right here is going to be mainly uh, just so that everything fits. There's not a specific length that it needs to be. And this, this height distance can be different from this height distance. But if you want it to be linear, these bars always have to be the same. And then you have a double reverse four to six bar. It's the same exact concept. It's just instead of it being a four bar on top, it's a six bar. Um, and as for the lengths that need to be the same, this bar, right, these two bars at the bottom right here need to be the same length as this top, as, as the middle bar in the six bar, the one that goes all the way through. Um, and then you'll get that linear idea and then you get that extra bump of height uh, because it's a six bar. As for a scissor, scissor lift, uh, it's, it functions by lifting itself up by compressing its triangular cross sections and it allows it to gain height at the expense of its stability when fully extended. So as this lift moves up, it's gonna be less and less and less stable. Um, and they're typically moderately complex to build due to how all of these, there are so many joints at each cross section and you can have some problems with friction with that when that happens. And at the same time, you also have a lot of weight. So you can see this team uh, had to put a lot of tensioning on. And that's just one of the traits that uh, the scissor lift has. However, it is probably the most complex lift. It's, it's not the most complex. It's one of the more simple lifts. However, you will run into problems when trying to figure out your sliding mechanism or when trying to figure out how you're going to power it or when you're trying to figure out how to mount the top back on, which is just going to be another one of these. Thank you for watching.